Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. The first 500 people to click on the link in the description below will get two months of Skillshare Premium free. So you wanna make some fire videos, but the only stabilizers you have at your disposal are these two guys right here. Well, don't worry because today we're gonna to be going over 10 handheld filming tips that you can start applying today and it won't cost you a penny. So tip number one is don't be a gimbal or don't try to be a gimbal. If you shoot handheld with the intention of having long smooth movements that look like they were shot with a stabilizer, you're in for a bad time. Not only will every little shake and jitter look that much more unsettling, but all of the stabilization you would have to add in post will just make your footage appear all warped or fake, which is definitely not what we want as this has a very unprofessional look to it. Now keep in mind that having smooth handheld shots and trying to mimic gimbal movements are two completely different things. So let's get into some of the ways you can actually get better and more smooth handheld footage. Now tip number two is to plan out your camera movements before you actually make the shot. Now I know to some of you this might sound a little bit obvious, but believe me, when it comes to getting smooth handheld footage, this will make a huge difference. It is much easier to get smoother shots in general when you are able to work with your subject and be on the same page. So let's say I'm filming a food prep assembling a sushi burger, I can actually tell them exactly what I want them to do with their hands and what speed to move at. That way when I'm getting the shot, I know exactly what they're going to be doing and I won't be caught off guard by any sudden movements I wasn't expecting. Now this brings us to tip number three, which is to keep your movements short and concise. Now the longer your shot is, the more inconsistency and variation there will be across that camera movement. Not only will keeping your shots shorter and more concise help with the actual stability and steadiness of your footage, but it will also improve the overall pace and flow of your video. Now tip number four is actually something I've talked about a lot in the past, and that is to use foreground. Having something in the foreground of your shot will enhance your camera movement, making it appear more dramatic. This gives you the ability to not have to cover as much space when you're trying to get a dynamic looking shot. Now moving along to tip number five, and that is to avoid shooting all of your shots from your own point of view. I've noticed that quite a few people have this habit of holding the camera in this position, which results in a lack of variation across different shots. So instead, try and lower your camera to get some different angles, shoot from different perspectives, or maybe even shoot through objects to create some interesting framing and different looking compositions. Now tip number six is actually another trick that I've mentioned in the past, but I'm bringing it back because so many people found it helpful, and I call it the reverse focus reveal. While shooting in a high frame rate of 60 or 120 frames per second, set your camera to manual focus and begin your shot locked onto your subject. Now smoothly pull away, taking it out of focus. From here, you can slow down the clip and add some stabilization. And then once you throw it into reverse, this will give you an awesome dramatic looking focus reveal. Now tip number seven is actually a really simple one, but when in doubt, Keep your camera completely still. If a movement isn't working out for you or it's just looking really shaky, there's nothing wrong with keeping your camera completely stationary. Now, if you get some really clean static shots, these work great for establishing a scene or grabbing close-up details of a subject. But another thing you can actually take advantage of when getting these stationary shots is that you can add movement in post for a really smooth look. So here is a completely static shot that already looks pretty good as is. And if I wanted to, I can go ahead and keyframe a scale in effect 
to create a zoom in or zoom out. Now, last but not least, tip number eight is to just embrace the handheld look. There is absolutely nothing wrong with a little bit of camera shake, and oftentimes it can actually help to immerse the viewer into the story. A lot of feature films and big productions actually use handheld for a ton of their shots, and it's one of the more aesthetically pleasing ways to bring life to a scene. Now, when embracing the handheld look, it is definitely important to still try and keep your camera steady so that you don't nauseate your audience, but don't stress about a little bit of shake or rawness to the clip. If anything, it can help to wear a camera strap or add some weight to your setup, whether it's a battery grip, a cage, or a handle. So one question I'm always getting asked on this channel is where I went to film school. And as a lot of you already know, I never went to film school. I actually studied marketing in university, but everything I know about making videos and social media content is picked up over the years through watching tons of videos online. This past weekend, I actually just finished binge watching this course by Dale McManus on Skillshare, where he talks about how to get professional looking videos on any camera. So for those of you who aren't already familiar with Skillshare, it's essentially an online learning community for creators, and they've got thousands of business, life lifestyle and technology classes, and with their premium membership, you get unlimited access to high quality classes from experts who cover topics such as shooting vlogs, wedding films, documentaries, and low budget filmmaking, all for less than $10 a month. And the first 500 people to go down and click the link in the description below will receive two months of Skillshare Premium completely free. So that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Follow me on Instagram at daniel.schiffer, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.